Hello, I'm Andre J, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to update your images for a uh, VSCR Pi unit. Um, the, the, the sort of motivating um, issue at hand here, or the motivating topic, is that um, the 1.5 updates are fully released for everyone as of yesterday. Um, and uh, uh, I just want to make sure that everyone is pretty clear on the concept of how to go about updating things. There is some text information about it, but um, sometimes it's also helpful to have the video thing. Uh, but if you prefer to skip all the video nonsense and just go straight to the text, I'll show you how to do that in this video too. Um, I also kind of want to talk a little bit about, and I'll be also talking about this in all the other 1.5 update videos I'll be posting, um, about sort of what's going on with the whole Etsy shop universe of the um, VSCR Pi. Um, some of you might be aware that there's nothing available for sale at the Etsy shop right now. You can check the date on this too. It's uh, January 26, 2022. Uh, this is because the availability of the Raspberry Pi, which is this, uh, the basic unit at hand here, is... Um, it's pretty tricky right now, and I'm not 100% sure at what point in the future there will be a reliable supply chain for that. It will happen at some point. Uh, the main question is really just when and how steady will it be. Uh, so in the interest of that, um, I've sort of stopped doing any more sales at the moment, and I'm also sort of trying to consider some alternate models for how to go about proceeding with the development and maintenance of this whole universe of the Raspberry Pi versions and also the desktop versions and also future video hardware and software open source uh, systems I'm interested in designing. Uh, the thing I'm settling on for the meanwhile, which is... Um, you know, we'll see how this actually turns out, um, but I have a uh, set up a Patreon account uh, there's a whole bunch of tiers ranging from like $5 to $100 per month. And the thing is, is that basically if you're someone who is interested in using these and has been doing them DIY or you bought one from me but has made a bunch more DIY or you're just interested in like generally supporting me in the business of or in the, not the business, but the process of like updating, designing and making new stuff for the whole uh, world, uh, you can just literally pay a little bit every month. And if enough people get together and like subscribe and pay me a little bit every month, for me to sort of not have to, you know, resort to other methods of income generation, then uh, I can conceivably keep working on this as like a full-time project. Um, of course, if not, the 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 if 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 people don't really want to do this, and this is you know completely up to individuals, it's you know I'll just have to like turn to other methods of income like. Um, a beard model or a, 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 a starting a cult or something or you know going back to some sort of a job situation where uh, some you know ignorant employer is like taking advantage of my general like willingness to sell my time to you know <laughs> do whatever kind of like bullshit manual or mental labor uh, seems to be the most employable thing that I have available at any moment um, not really like super interested in the job thing, but we'll all do what we have to do, but uh, I would prefer to keep working on these kind of things and also, you know, having the opportunity to like focus on <laughs> these things for like uh, mostly for the last year and a half um, has sort of given me some more ideas on how I could better develop future software and hardware products like this, which I, which the whole act of like maintaining the business of the Etsy shop, manufacturing, selling, procuring components has really kind of, uh, uh taken a toll on like the whole creative research and development aspect of things. As you can see where I haven't barely sort of been able to come up with anything new other than slight variations on like and updates to these things since you know really going full-time into it uh so you know i'm personally really excited about what we can do in the future and also i think a lot more people are interested in getting into you know the, all of the devices that i make but they're just simply there's no more raspberry Pis like reliably available at the moment so uh i think 
probably the best thing to do in the immediate future for me is to work on making the desktop apps uh, uh, much easier to install and use than they have been. So that at least people will be able to have some sort of an access to, you know, artificial life, wave pool, spectral mesh, all of these things, um, temporal vortex or whatever, in, until the time comes when, like, stuff like this actually becomes available again and people can start making their own DIY things. Uh, but yeah, so subscribe to my Patreon if you are interested in that. Uh, and without further ado, we'll go ahead with how to update your image. So today, for the just for the heck of it, we'll do artificial life. Um, it's pretty much the same for every single other thing. You just you know substitute one name for the other. But so on each of these, what you have is an SD card, and what you want to do is pull out this SD card. The SD card is where the firmware for these sit. Uh, the firmware is just the set of instructions that tells the hardware what exactly it's going to be doing. You take it out and then you have some sort of a, you know, SD card reader thing like this. Plug it in there and then you plug it into a USB slot on your computer. Um, and then you're going to want to go to my website. You click on the wave pools and friends. Oh yeah, you can see that there's a thing if you, I will try to be doing limited batches of uh, these things throughout 2022, whenever they become available. You can subscribe here and to find out when I may be selling some stuff. Uh, I think we'll be doing some kind of a lottery system or a first come first serve. It just depends on how many people sign up. If like 500 people sign up, I feel like a lottery system feels more fair. If 20 people sign up, we'll just do first come first serve. Um, but so video synthesis ecosphere r pi we're going to scroll down here to where it says information on the hardware necessary for oh, hardware necessary for diy builds and upgrades so once we're over here let me try to make sure this actually fits on the screen a little bit better ah, there we go uh scroll down a whole bunch um, what I was saying earlier about how to go about doing this stuff DIY, if you don't want to watch this whole long ass video, um, you can just read the stuff right here. And if I just control F image to install on images, it tells you, you know, in text what you need to do on how to get the images. Um, but we'll scroll down, scroll down to here to this section where it says images. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of new stuff going on here. We've got uh, uh, all kinds of things happening. Convolutional Chaos, Auto Mesh, Hello Word, Generic Geometry Utility, and uh, pretty much I'll be doing a short-ish, short to long-ish video for every single one of these, telling you what the updates are, if there are some really relevant updates, and, uh, and or introducing you, like stuff like Hello Word is brand new, so want to make sure people get the intro on how to use that kind of stuff. But we'll go over here to Artificial Life. You can see it says version 1.5. That's the, the update for right now. Uh, I live in North America, um, so I'm going to get the NTSC version. If you are pretty much anywhere else in the world, you're probably going to want the PAL version, unless you specifically want NTSC. This only really has to do with the analog signal output um, part of it. Yeah, so I will just click on NTSC. It'll take me over here. And I can just, yeah, it won't be able to preview it because it doesn't know what uh, this thing looks like. And we'll go to RAR. Um, you'll just have to trust me on this that this doesn't have viruses on it and we'll download anyway. Um, I'm not actually going to download things in real time here, but um, so then if we go to the downloads folder, we should see something AL 1.5, 1 1-5 RAR. I have WinRAR active. Uh, uh, you can also use 7-zip or whatever comes built in with the OSX thing that you like to use. We just go extract here. Uh, I'm also not going to do that because that will take too long. Um, and then we have this image file. So this is the image that we're talking about. In order to write this image to the SD card, we're going to use a program called Belena Etcher. And there's a link to download this on my website. But we want to make sure that our SD card is plugged in. So I'll go flash another, because I was flashing stuff earlier. Make sure to remove that. Flash from file. 
do 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 and go to downloads where I have these things and see it already knows that I'm probably going to want to, it's only going to look for image files or ISOs or DMG or any of these kind of disk images things. I click on open, click on select target. So, let's see, not showing, so it's going to give you a little heads up that you don't really want to fuck around with these large drives. <laughs> um, sometimes you need to double check and plug in and plug out your thing a couple of times before it will recognize what it is. Ah oh, yeah, and of course on Windows if you plug one of these things in it'll give you so many annoying error things and automatically load Windows. Um, but yeah, so the mass storage device, USB device, 15.9 gigabytes, and it should have two partitions on it, two little uh, letters, because there's a boot partition and then there's the, the actual file system partition. But make sure to click on that one. Do not put it onto a five terabyte drive or a system drive. And then we select, and then I would hit flash, and whatever system you're on, you're definitely going to get some kind of a, whoa, heads up, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your advice thing? And then you say yes, and it'll start to image. And this should take about 10 to 15 minutes on uh, uh, whatever thing you're using. Some of this nonsense will pop up, just kind of escape out of it. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I, mean, I know that some people have, like, come to me with concerns about they don't want to break something. Um, it's really, really hard to break something if you're doing this. Like basically by pulling out the SD card, you may be able to hurt something by if you like swallow the SD card or you know set it on fire or literally just went out of your way to snap it in half. Those would be bad things. Uh, but ultimately, uh, uh, the SD card that we're working with costs like five, ten dollars. If by some chance you do happen to like, um, you know, set it on fire, uh, you can just pick up a new SD card for another five or ten bucks. And I always recommend that people who are using these should just have like a backup, you know, five or six SD cards around because not just because for maybe something will go wrong, but all of these images here you see. Uh, on pretty much anything you have, except for these audio reactive ones, like if I wanted to use Convolutional Chaos on my Artificial Life, I would just use a backup, get another SD card, and do the same thing, and download the NTSC version or the PAL version if I'm in the right zone, flash it to that SD card, and then I can just swap SD cards out and play whatever's going on. And um, I guess one reason I'm sort of going into this in so much detail is I'm sort of thinking it might be interesting to, well, I mean, not be interesting. Uh, I, my long-term plans are not to continue to like manufacture, like manufacture, like sell these Raspberry Pi kit things to people anymore. I think a more useful thing for me to do with my time and energy is actually work on the development side of things. And just expect that everyone out there, if you really want to like get at these things, you can put one together yourself. It's really simple. Like this is the most complicated step here. Uh, it's really just grabbing an image that I'm going to provide to you, like whether or not you want to pay me, and you can do that. Uh, and if you do want to like help support the, the the whole process of this, you can just subscribe to the Patreon, which would probably be the most useful thing. But as always, if you're on my website. You can go down here and click on the PayPal link if you just want to make like a one-time donation thing. Um, but yeah, I do highly recommend at this point if you are so inclined to donate uh, one way or the other, because uh, uh, these are the, the 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 you know it's the financial reality of life that I probably need to pay rent and eat food. Uh, uh, and on an ongoing basis and if I'm not able to do that via you know like that weird thing I was doing where I was like putting together Raspberry Pi video sense for people uh, I'll have to figure out something else <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's about it for how to make your own image um, uh, oh yeah one final thing, you'll be able to know what version of whatever you're running because the splash screen will say so if you're doing anything previous to the most current updated version, version 1.5, 
The splash screen won't say anything down in the corner here, but for all the 1.5 and all the new 1.0 versions that are bundled in, uh, it'll have the version number on there. And we'll have a different desktop background that it boots to uh, than the usual one you would see. Uh, so you'll be able to know right off the bat whether or not you're working with uh, um, the old versions or the new versions. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot. And as always, have fun. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, or uh, uh, amusing jokes in the comments. All right, thanks.